Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 128, recorded November 13th, 2013. Seymour Rubenstein. Triangulation is brought to you by Personal Capital. You'll finally have all your financial life in one place with Personal Capital. Get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation. And by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 250,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TRI to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. And by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere, on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Visit HuluPlus.com slash twit to start your free two-week trial. That's HuluPlus.com slash twit. It's time for Triangulation, the show where we get to uh, talk to some of the most interesting, smartest people on the Internet. And we have a pioneer with us, and I'm so, th so thrilled to welcome Seymour Rubenstein to uh, Triangulation. It's good to see you, Seymour. Thank I don't you very think we've much. ever met. I'm thrilled to meet you, even though you live... Just down the road a piece, practically. Well, not exactly. Yeah. Well, and you live in Marin. That's close enough, right? No, 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 no. I, moved, I left Marin some time oh, ago. Where are you now? I'm in Solano County. I'm in Benicia. Oh, you are a bit of a distance away. Yeah. All right. Not so far. Not so, so far. 45 minutes. Yeah, that's right. So uh, when when you say the name Seymour Rubenstein, to me, the first thing I think of is, micro, is uh, WordPro, MicroPro, the company, and WordStar. Correct. The software. But I want to go back a little bit farther because you got you got your first computer uh, work was as a marketing person for Imsi. The first actually no, I really no. started a lot of other than that. Well, and I, let's go way back to the beginning then. Okay. So, um, when did you computers back then were not computers as they are today. That's for sure. When did you first become interested in that kind of thing? Well, it's actually I became interested when I was able to take a course in it. Okay. It was the only course offered at Brooklyn College at the time. I was a graduating senior, and the course was always filled to the brim, and I could never get in, but when I was, as a graduating senior, I had a uh, priority. So you so, knew you wanted to do it. You just couldn't get in. That's right. And what year was this? 1964. So we're talking mainframes. Yeah? Well, sort of. They had a small, what they called a small scientific machine, which was the IBM 1620, which was... Kind of a mainframe, but it was very How small. How small was it? Uh, about the size of a large desk. <laughs> <laughs> and you used a teletype to talk to it? How did you talk to it? Punch cards? No, I had, I had of course, it was made by IBM, so they had a Selectric typewriter. Uh, really? Yeah. And you would type on the Selectric and then... Yes. Wow. And then would it type back to you? It could, and it, had, it also had a card reader. Right. And a card reader was once the, the most amazing device because it could read cards at the rate of 1,000 cards a minute. Right. Uh, so the cards looked like they were pouring, well, like water. As long as they weren't spindled, folded, or mutilated. <laughs> That's right. They worked fine. <laughs> and if you put one in upside down, you had to run your whole program over again. That's true. Yeah. You may make any mistake at all, you have to run everything over <sighs> again. <laughs> I, do, I do remember that from my, my yeah. days. And that's yeah. why I wasn't interested in computers back then. What was it appealed to you uh, about computing? Well, I had always been interested in electronics because I was an electronic hobbyist as a child. Mm -hmm. and I would Heath Kits, things like that? Yes, Heath Kits, and I, uh, and uh, you know about Heath Kits. Well, of course good. I do. <laughs> I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> He's laughing a little too loudly at that one. <laughs> sure, I remember Heath Kits. I did a yeah. few Heath Kits in my time. Yeah. So, so you were a hobbyist doing those, yes. like, like building yeah. rate crystal radios, that kind of thing too. Well, or? actually, I did. Yeah. A crystal radio. Yeah. Those were fun. But actually, the, my my greatest achievement in that respect was building a a one tube radio in a cut down cigar box. Cool, a tube, an actual tube. An actual tube with a one and a half volt filament. Wow. So it, it could operate on a, on a little battery. So this is the analog electronics, though. Totally, totally. When did you become interested in digital electronics? 
Well, I guess it was kind of, they kind of were similar for a long time. There was overlap, wasn't there? They had tubes and computers. And well, they had tubes and computers, but I didn't fool with those. I mean, relays. Yeah, relays, that's yeah. true. Was, well, my father was, was, was into pinball machines. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately, he passed away when I was just a little boy, unfortunately. Okay. But, uh, were there some pinball machines left over? Uh, not that I could find. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just remember one time I went with him on a service call. And he was there with a little file filing the contact tips. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's very analog. <laughs> very, very you analog. You can't do yeah. that anymore. No. <laughs> so uh, what did you learn at this Brooklyn College uh, course in uh, computing? Well, actually, it was a crash course, kind of. It was, uh, we learned ma machine language programming, assembly language programming, and basic Fortran programming, all in one course. Wow. There were 42 students that, that they allowed to register for the course, so much so that the, they exceeded the capacity of the schoolroom so the, a lot of the kids were standing outside in the hallway. Listening? <laughs> listening in? Trying to listen in. Oh, my. And only 12 students finished the course. What? Was it that difficult? Apparently. Or they just didn't like standing outside in the hall? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's possible, too. <laughs> could, have, could have been that, too. So did that inspire you to pursue a career in computing? Well, no. actually, it was, a, it was an interesting set of coincidences because I took the course... In fact, I'll tell you a little bit, a bit of a vignette about that course. Yeah. Because uh, we were taken, uh, on the first day of the class, uh, we were taken down to the, quote, computer lab, unquote. And we, we looked at this monstrous deck of cards in the card reader. And they pressed the button and, and read in about a quarter of the deck and the, typed on the console. Welcome, Brooklyn College students, class 101. We, are now demonstrating, we will now demonstrate this computer by allowing everyone to play a hand of blackjack. Oh. And then he pressed another button and read the rest of the deck. And of course, just that alone, my eyes bugged out. Me too. That's pretty cool. It was. I mean, I've never seen anything like it before in my life because yeah. it was the first it's time I ever was close to a computer. It was just those punch cards and that was it. Yes. That made it do that. Yes. Did it beat you at uh, Blackjack? Do you remember? Uh, no, actually, <laughs> I won 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it paid off, but... <laughs> no, but yeah, it's the, it's the thought that counts. That's right. Uh, but, 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 but that was a very interesting clue that it gave me when I was presented with the first problem. The first problem was to be able to read in a card with a number on it, and we had to add up all the digits, including that number, and punch out a new card that said the answer is X. And we were also told that this computer had two ways of reading cards. It could read cards alphabetically, or it could read cards just numbers. And that was very important because numbers you use for calculations and alphabetically you use for right. text. But I didn't see that when I saw the, the sample that they showed. And I thought, I thought about that, and I realized that if I made the first card always digital but with a signal on it, that I could then tell every other card how to read the next card. And I wrote the program that way, and I showed it to the professor the next day, and he looked at it. He looked at me and says, you're going to be a programmer. You had an aptitude for this. Exactly. You understood it somehow. I understood it I don't somehow. even, 50 years later, understand what you just said. So, <laughs> <laughs> But somehow you got the thing so to do what you uh, wanted I, it to do. And that uh, was... I, got, I know, I got, I got it so that you could make a decision based upon circumstances. Right. And that was what was valuable, and that was what I learned. And so not only did I get an A, but I was one of 12 people that I finished with the course. Right. <laughs> but you were able, what you did was you were able to make an abstraction about how the computer works exactly. that allowed you to uh, communicate right. with it. Yes. And that's really yeah. what, a, what a programmer is doing, isn't it? That's true. And, uh, and, and yet, well, the, 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 the mar remarkable set of coincidences that I have occurred, for example, the following, f following a, a, a new job that I got, I saw a, a book on this programmer's, on this uh, engineer's desk. It's called I Programming the IBM 1620 Computer by Clarence B. Germain. I said, what are you doing with that book? Oh, we got this uh, RFP from the Naval Applied Science Laboratory in Brooklyn. They want us to attach some of, equipment, uh, some of our new equipment to this computer to use in a classified project. Really, I said, gee, I wanna, I'm very interested. Well, I know you took one course in computer <laughs> You've had what? one class. <laughs> yeah, one class. <laughs> He says, but what do you know about this computer? I said, that's the same one they taught me how to use. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. I know assembly language, I know machine language, and I know basic. Fortran. Well, well P.S., P.S., I, I, got, I got to participate with him on you the did. proposal. And we submitted it, and six weeks later we got the award. And how did they become a programmer? 
So that's one way to get a job as a programmer is talk to yourself. <laughs> How to become a programmer. <laughs> and you were working on identifying uh, ships from their sound. That's correct. Like sonar, kind of, or well, it's a, the motor, the, the, the motor, the, the, the motors, the, the prop, the, 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 they, they decided the cavitation that, and the they decided that motors had individual sound, signatures, sounds for signatures, yes. So you're this is fairly sophisticated for a computer that had how much memory? I mean, not a lot of memory, right? Sixty four k, sixty four k. You got to get the waveform somehow in there and analyze it. And well, actually, no, they had an advantage. They, um, if you remember, the original fax machines were these huge things made out of. Uh, uh, a thousand pounds of metal, right. yeah. <laughs> and and they would print on that on the fax paper sound harmonics in patterns, and the whole idea was to have a reader that could read the sound patterns and do correlations with other sound patterns for known vessels to see whether they can make comparisons. Oh, how interesting! So in effect, you were sending a fax of the sound of the ship, and then comparing it to a known fax. Yes. And if they match, you know it's the ship. That's right. Wow, that's kind of an interesting way to work. Well, this was my first project. What my a very great first, project! I had no idea whether it was difficult or easy or what have you. I just I had a lot of fun. It's the ignorance of youth is a blessing. I, I suppose so. <laughs> I suppose so. But that but that led to something else because. Uh, I, after I finished that project, I came into work, and three engineers were waiting for me in my office. I thought, uh oh, did I do something wrong? <laughs> it turned out that uh, what this company was very famous for was building devices that could fake enemy firing radar. It would detect an enemy firing radar signal and create a return signal that would make the radar think it was someplace else. Spoof it. It would spoof it. Wow. And they had 13 what different models. Wow. And they, and, and they, they, they set about building the programs to test these different ones, and it turned out the, the technician was going to take two years to finish. And they had to deliver it in four months or pay penalties. And it said, Seymour, we think you can help us out. Well, and once again, you didn't know. I, yeah, I could do that. I, no, no, I, I had no idea. I said, well, you have to teach me first what the technician knows. <laughs> and they taught me. And they showed me these blueprints with truth tables in them. And I looked at the truth tables, and I, th I thought, well, you know, I can convert that to an array. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sure. And then from the array, I can decide what to write for the programs. But I had one little problem. I had no idea how to I invert an array. Right. I had no idea. And, and I remember I went to Nashua, New Hampshire, where, the, where they had all of the big wigs there. This is IBM up there, right? Well, no, no, this was in Nashville, New Hampshire. Oh, no okay. IBM there. Just, no IBM, oh, okay. Uh, just New England. Uh, just, just snow. Uh, lots yeah. of snow. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, no shortage of snow, I tell yeah. you. <laughs> if snow was electricity, it would be a walking powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, he told me, this, this fellow, fellow that I met there, he told me to use inner do loops. I said, inner do loops, what do you mean? He says, well, you have uh, an outer do loops that cycles at one rate and an inner do loop that cycles at another rate. And that way you can invert the array. I thought about that. I said, "Ah, that's it." Oh, that's cool. And he and he, and he would. A light went off. Uh, right, and and not only that, but he he would also tell the story. He said, "You know," he said, "At that moment, he said, I felt I was the victim of a brain dump." <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. So you obviously had a, a real knack for this. I mean, yes, I did. There's something about this really clicked with the way your brain. Absolutely, it oh, really works. clicked. I, and in fact, uh, when I completed the. Uh, the next project, which was this uh, one I just started to describe to you, where the three engineers came in, yeah, and I completed that. The company was so impressed with what I did; they they doubled my salary. They offered me uh, uh, stock in the company, and they uh, had me moved to New Hampshire to become part of their new development team. And that really launched my career. You know, it's still true today. I think that there are people who just have the uh, just understand how com how this stuff works, and they get it immediately. And you can say things, oh, just do inner do inner outer do loops, and they go, oh yeah, and it, a light goes on for them. That's right. And there's other people who go do loops, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's like gears to me almost, right? I, I get, I, it actually is gears. Yeah, it is gears, gears. but except it's it's the gears that work Digital by logic, gears. right? Exactly, yeah, logical exactly. gears. Exactly. Yeah. So, but an important division of my company occurred after I moved up to New Hampshire because I realized that as a programmer I could only go so far and unless I also found out about how business worked I was never going to make any real money 
And that's when I realized I had to go into business somehow. Yeah. See, somehow. you were, see, you were smarter than a programmer. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Program. See, programmers just go, oh, I'm a programmer. That's good. I know how to do that. But you realized that you had to, you had, you had to go one one step farther. Yeah, in fact, as I came to understand it, I haven't figured that out. People yet, by in the way. The, people in finance <laughs> would look at programmers as technicians. That's right. And managers are the people who make money because they control the technicians. That's right. That's right. And I didn't want to be just a technician. Right. Do you, now, okay, so when did you, okay, so this is, you're still in New Hampshire. Did you leave at that point? Did you say? Well, actually, uh, another fortuitous circumstance happened because the city and county of San Francisco purchased a number of display terminals that I was writing software for. Okay. So they sent me out to San Francisco. So we've moved away from the Selectric now. We actually have display terminals. This is the mid-60s? Yes, yeah. mid to late 60s. But uh, no, they still, they still had Selectrics. I mean, people oh. are still typing like Don't crazy. Don't be crazy. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking nuts now. Of course we had Selectrics. <laughs> but they also had CRTs? Yes. Okay. And, and the, they were, we called them boob tubes because they didn't do anything except when you typed, you saw a letter. There was nothing programmable about it. There was no intelligence. No intelligence, that's It was just correct. a display. And, um, is this roughly the era when Space Wars, were they were playing those on the round No, CRTs? actually, this, this precedes that. This e earlier than that, even? Yes. So the only thing they were doing is you type a key and the R shows up there. Type another key and the R shows up. Right. That's but, it. But this had, a, a, this particular display that Sanders made to compete against IBM had a, a, what they called a home character so that after it would write some text, it could actually go back home and write some more and interleave text, make some letters brighter than others, and also create fields so that it looked like a fill-in form. Oh, interesting. And then, and then when you sent text to it, you could address each one of these like, like separate leaves of a page where each one was separated by a home character. So we're now getting some programming going on exactly, in these displays. Exactly, yeah. and, and, and they wanted me to write software support for it. So anyhow, I had the opportunity to come out to San Francisco and I met Bill Millard, who at that time was the, oh, yeah. uh, was the, uh, uh, ma uh, the, he was the director of EDP, which is what we call computer technology in those days, electronic data processing. Right. <laughs> For the city of San Francisco? For the city and county of oh, San Francisco, that. yes, oh, yes. Uh -huh. So uh, some years later, uh, I had the, uh, 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 the opportunity to call him again. Of course, I was looking for consulting work. I'd become an independent consulting. And he offered me a job with a car software company, and that took me out to California. But was this MSI yet, or was this? No, this precedes that. Precedes MSI. Yeah. So yeah. it was just software at this point. Just software. Mm -hmm. System Dynamics was the name of the company, and he uh, made a partnership with a fellow called Dick Gentry, who made a telecommunications control program that operated all the city's uh, terminals for taxes and and voting registrations and something like that, something like that. Very advanced, actually, for a city kind of San Francisco government huh. doing that. Huh. But this is, again, still all before microcomputers at this point. Definitely, yeah. all before. This was, yeah. uh, we're talking now early S 70s. Stone Age. <laughs> Maybe pebbles. <laughs> we're at pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking to Seymour Rubenstein, and we're about to enter the the revolution, the microcomputer revolution at this point. Well, you right? know, you say revolution because it's very interesting about that. I mean, the first generation was uh, made by IBM uh, with 70, called 7090s, and, and the, the, they had vacuum tubes where they had, they had whole buildings that were called, called a computer because of all the vacuum tubes. That they were they huge. Had, huge, huge, giant, giant things. And the second generation, so uh, uh, was it was the 1400 series, and so it was very very primitive compared to, to today's technology. That's for sure. And then IBM came out with the 360, and that was going the yeah, third generation. It was just the size of a wall. That wasn't. That's right. Thing. That's right. Yeah, right. those are the ones with the spinning, the tapes going. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we had one on the screensaver set. That's how I know. Or was it was it 360 or 370? It was one of the. Well, 370 followed the 360. Right. It's the next big thing. Right. Okay. And big is the word. <laughs> oh, big is definitely the word. <laughs> These are not In fact, I, I used to watch the the IBM technician when I'd help up the cabinet. 
such a melange of wires and well, I mean, mm. unbelievable. I mean, we're not at microprocessors yet. We're not oh, solid no, state oh, at oh, all. Oh, solid state, but the transistors. Right. Individual transistors. Right. By the, by the hundreds of thousands. So they've gotten away from tubes. They're using at least some tubes. And the, and the 360. They're yeah. using transistors now. Yeah, so, uh, that, but they're this big. Each transistor. Well, oh, oh, absolutely. This big. Right, right. Now, <laughs> now, and now it's 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 smaller than a dot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get eight, if you get eight million of those on a chip the size of a square inch. Yeah. Exactly. That's the difference. Exactly. <laughs> That's a big difference. But they 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 draw the the original schematic on a giant wall and then they photo photo reduce it. Photo photo reduce it exactly. Yeah. So uh, when did Insi happen? Because you, are you still in touch with Bill Millard at this point, right? Yes, we, we, of course we remained friends, and then we sort of broke apart for a while uh, because uh, I, when, when I came out for, and I worked for him at System Dynamics, uh, I picked up an assignment from him to develop a law office management system, and that was my first exposure to a mini computer. This is you know, what we right. have today with microcomputers. Right. That was a mini computer. Something like a data general or data a general equipment. Digi right, exactly. Yeah. And this was made by Varian data machines. Varian, okay. And that took me a few years to do that, but we're still, no, no, uh, still in the primitive stages. Are, are people using them for word processors yet, or no, no, no? What is a law office using it for? Keep track of customer records. Billing. Billing. That's right. That's where you start. Yeah, that's where the money the, is. The money is absolutely. <laughs> get that part first. Absolutely, <laughs> we absolutely. can still use Selectrics. You got to get the billing done. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah, that, that, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah, we know where the priorities. And in fact, the way the way they used to do it is they would have uh, these uh, uh, diaries, which consist of little p pieces of paper that would write little things on, <laughs> and they would root them out, and they would throw them, and then they would throw them in a big basket. And they would follow themselves down into the accounting office where the, the poor staff there had a sort of dozens and dozens of little scraps of paper to try and put together a bill for a customer. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, right. We've come so far. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you were there every step of the way. That's what I think is fine, kind of interesting. Well, that's true. I was, yeah. yes. You had a good seat to watch the I revolution. Had a very good then. seat. Do you feel like... Uh, uh, could you see the continuity of it and feel like the, just the change that's that's happened? Well, I have to say, I think that was one of my strongest points because, uh, when I, I, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, I, uh, when I did this variant data machines thing, uh, I was able to attract the attention of an attorney billing service, and they they liked what I did and they wanted me to come and join them and so on, and. And then how I sold a lot of computers, a lot of Varian Data Machines computers with my software on there. Sure. So Varian came and purchased my division. Huh. And I wound for up... For you? For, well, for me and my technology, yes. Yeah. And, and I wound up uh, having a, an assignment in, in Zurich, Switzerland. And... Uh, now, but, but you had this insight that it's better to be the, 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 the business guy than the, the right. guy who writes the software, but exactly. you're still stuck writing software. Well, more design than writing. Design, okay. So now you have people working for you writing Exactly. The code. See, because the, the, I understood programming extremely well, so I could really help people and direct right. people to tell right. them what to, how to do it and what to do and so on. That's the hardest thing is to get somebody who could talk to normal people and then translate it into something that the computer programmers can understand. You just said a dirty word. Normal people? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You think we're normal, Seymour? <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. I mean, you know, what do you say about someone whose main relationships in life is uh, with a computer? We're not normal. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Right. Uh, and yet it's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, it I is. I mean, it's it wonderful. Is. It's truth. It's pure truth. Well, that's why engineers, I love engineers. It's, it's, it's yes or no, black or white. It works or it doesn't yeah. work. Right. It's very straightforward. There's yeah, no yeah. gray areas. No, there's no gray area. That's true. Yeah. The only gray area is in your head. Because your head isn't perfect. Exactly. It's trying to understand the perfection right, that right. the machine represents. So when there's a bug, you don't blame the machine, you blame you. It's all up here. There's no question about it. So you came back to California from Switzerland. Yes. And we're, there's something starting to happen. This is the late 70s. I, there's it, a little buzz going on. No, actually, it's the mid 70s. Mid 70s. Mid -70s. Still mid -70s. early, okay. Yeah, 77. Okay. 77. I came back. 
And I noticed a new store had opened up in San Rafael where I was living at the time called the Bite Shop of San Rafael. Ah, the Bite Shop. And that's when something happened. So tell us your memory of the Bite Shop in those early days. Well. Was it, a, what, what kind of place was it? It was weird. It was like somebody who was selling model airplanes. Yeah, it's a hobbyist store. Hobbyist store, that's yeah. right. And that's a it. strange, expensive hobby at oh, that. Yeah. Well, for 500 bucks, you can buy a computer. Yeah, well, that's not bad. Doesn't do anything. Well, 500, now, 500 bucks today is not bad. But 500 bucks in then that was, was what a dollar, dollar was a dollar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you still didn't do anything with it because you needed. It was a lump on a lump. <laughs> it was just a lump. <laughs> it just sat there. All you could do is twiddle with the lights and the switches. <laughs> it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything because it had no software. <laughs> it was just a Software, it, it didn't a, have a display, it didn't have a keyboard, it didn't have anything. That's correct. You had, if you were lucky, you had some switches on the front. Well, and maybe a cassette tape or something. <laughs> oh, that 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 was very advanced. <laughs> cassette tape. <laughs> that was expensive. I remember. <laughs> yeah. So what were they selling at the bite shop? Was it uh, was it Altairs? Was it M size? What were no, they no. selling? No, no. Altairs had their own store. Okay. They had their own store. So this was the bite shop. Sold com uh, companies like Chromemco and Chromemco and Processor Technology yeah. and Imsai. Yeah. These were S100 bus computers. Yes, that's right. That's right. They had slots. A god awful design by it was really us, us awful S100. <laughs> so terrible. What a junk. That was, by the way, where Steve Jobs went and he told Paul Terrell, he says, I can build this computer and uh, you just got to give me the money for the parts and I'll sell you this computer. <laughs> right, right, right. Terrell said, Get out of here. Actually, no, he gave him money, didn't he? And he built the first Apple uh, computer. Uh, at the bite shop. So you went in the bite shop and you looked around and you said, this is kind of interesting. Yeah, so I bought a, an MSI computer kit. You did? Yes. Yeah. I took it home, whopped, whipped out my soldering iron that I did when I was used to work in electronics as a hobbyist. And uh, a week later I had a computer. At least I think I had a computer. I wasn't really sure. <laughs> you can't tell. And I, and I bought an Anderson, well, I could fill it with the lights, but so what? So I bought an Anderson Jacobson Teletype terminal. Yeah. Teletype terminal is a very interesting device because it's four I.O. devices in one machine. You have punch paper tape, punch paper reader, and, and, and you can type in a, in a printer as well. So four devices in one, one unit. Slow, but, but still you have... And little, noisy. Oh, very noisy. Did you see ours in the lobby? I, somebody told me they could hook that up. We Why could start bother? <laughs> we could, I don't know. It would be kind of fun. <laughs> that's, 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 that's about... Yeah. <laughs> Chug it, chug. So you, you got so you bought yourself a teletype so you could see what the computer was thinking, right? Computers don't really think. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. I don't know. They act like they could think. It's a, it's all an act. It is an act, isn't it? Of course it is. It's they it's just a, do it so fast they, they fool us. Well, that's true. That's <laughs> they, true. They just add and subtract really, really fast. Give it a choice. I'll still take the human mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, but 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 what was interesting though, is that I decided to test it. And I wrote a program using uh, Intel's assembly language that would emulate what was called the edit instruction that, was, that existed on a 360 computer, IBM 360 computer, where you could take a packed decimal number and convert it to something that was printable with, with, uh, with embedded commas and decimal point and floating dollar signs and stuff like that. And one single it's like the printf command, kind of a formatted printout of a number. Oh yeah, but much yeah, but printf yeah, that's correct. But but more, but, but a lot more options. Okay. But you're right. It's very similar to printf. Yes. Okay. And um, I, I wrote that routine and I tested it. You're I running it at a pretty low level, right? There aren't many rare. tools. Is no. there? A, there's not Some, a basic, or uh, is there? No, 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 no basic. No basic. Assembler. It's all assembler. There's at least assembly. You're not took, running a machine. It took code. a half an hour to just load in the assembler at the chugga chugga chug rate. That's loading in from a paper tape. You're from loading. From a paper tape, yes. So you've got you buy the assembler. It's a roll of paper. I'm telling this to the kids who are watching. This is how you did it. Yeah, see, the, see that 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 pillow there? Yeah, this pillow. That pillow is the size of the roll. So I have a roll of paper tape this big. That's right. Hundreds of feet of tape, hundreds. and there's holes punched in the paper tape. Right, right, right. And you put that on the teletype. Right. And chugga 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 chugga. You, chug you press the button, your read right. button. And a half hour to 40 minutes, five minutes later, you have an assembly. If everything goes right, the tape doesn't tear. And no, and, and if you make a little error and you, cr you crush memory, you don't know what to do with it. You have to do it all over again. Aye. You had patience. Aye is just the right expression. <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> you had to have a lot of patience. A lot of patience and a lot of But you know, of it was still it was exciting 
because you would do all this and then it would do something. Well, see, that, that's what I was trying to tell you. I wrote this program, I tested it, and it worked. That's I, so cool. And I looked at this and I said, my God, it's a computer. It works. <laughs> I mean, it was five hundred dollars, and it does something. Uh, and I, I mean, I uh, you know, I had a lot of experience working in these very brightly lit rooms in the middle of the night, with surrounded by millions yeah. of millions of Raised dollars worth floor, of the priesthood that's the, taking care of this the thing. Yeah, that's right, the priesthood. That's right. And suddenly, it's in your living room. I, no, it was in my garage. Actually, okay. <laughs> a little too greasy for the living room. <laughs> too greasy. <laughs> Sounding iron smells and all that stuff. <laughs> the ozone. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's practically got steam coming out of it at this point. Right. Oh, that's cool, though. So you got, you got your MSI working yes. with your little soldering iron? So I wanted to find out more about this company. I, I called them up and I find out that it's Bill and Lord's company. You didn't know at the time? No. Oh, that's great. I called him up and he said, he said, well, what can I do for you, Seymour? He says, how about, I said, how about, how about working on something where we can work together? So he wound up giving me a job as a software product manager. And three weeks later, the director of marketing resigned, and he offered me the job. Was there any software at the time to be a software product manager for? There was an operating, a primitive operating system called CPM. This was CPM at, these, at this time? Yeah, well, actually, uh, uh, they called it, uh, uh, um, uh, what do they call it, M, M, M something or other. No, I, oh, they call it IDOS. IDOS. For, uh, or MDOS. MDOS, okay. For inside. Uh, but it didn't right. do much. You had a pip command. Yes. That would let you copy files. Well, the big thing that I had was a, was a strategy to be able to attach different I.O. devices and have a common way of accessing That's accessing. nice. Yes. That's kind of fundamental. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is fundamental, but it's a device for You've got to have that or you've kind of got a lump of iron in the living room or garage. <laughs> a garage. <laughs> it doesn't right, do right. anything. That's true. No That's I.O., true. no nothing. No nothing. That's right. So, um, so, and then you got into marketing. Fact, How do you actually, market something like this? I mean, who is the market for an MSI computer? Well, the original market was hobbyists. The Heathkit crowd. The Heathkit crowd, yeah. yes, exactly. In fact, I remember uh, right about that but time. But advanced Heathkit crowd because the instructions... Not easy. Uh, the instructions to put together the computer were not half as good as what you got right. from Heathkit. Heathkit was much better. Much better. I had a friend uh, at the time who was building uh, Altair. I think it, maybe it was an MSI. And we thought he was nuts. You're building what? I'm building a computer. <laughs> but he was a he was a Heathkit guy. Well, it was exciting for engineers to think that they can have their own private little computer they can play with. That's the thing that was the revolution. Right. And it was the thing that turned me off when I was in college. You had to go to the computer lab, and you had to go late at night because you never got time in the daytime, and right, you had to right. carry your cards. And that's right. It just that's wasn't personal. Well, oh, not at all. And not as soon all. as, even if it's primitive, as soon as you could have it in your house, and you can do it what you want with it. Well, you can do it at your leisure. At your leisure. You can do it between trips to the bathroom. Yes. Well, many <laughs> trips. <laughs> yeah, a cup of coffee, trip to the bathroom, lots of stuff going on in between. Exactly. <laughs> wow. We're talking to uh, Seymour Rubenstein. He is, uh, we're going to get to something now that is, is going to change the world in just a second. Uh, a pioneer in the computer uh, industry. Uh, we'll have more in just a moment. Our show today brought to you by Personal Capital, uh, another Another great triangulation. Was it Bill Harris? We did uh, maybe a year ago, the founder of Personal Capital. He wanted to make it possible for you to look, to go to a website, have all your financial information in a single spot, see everything you need so that you can make sense of your financial life. And that's what he's done. This is the catch-22 as we get older and more successful, the more complicated it is to manage our money. Accounts are scattered everywhere, checking, savings, retirement. You've got credit cards, you've got investments, you've got mortgages, you've got car loans, you got it all. How do you make uh, decisions when you can't see it all in one place? This is the dashboard for your financial life. All your accounts giving you a real-time snapshot with graphs, with charts, with reports that tell you the whole story. It's like having a, I don't know, financial GPS at your fingertips. It's a map to your financial life. And it's free if you go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation. Just takes a minute. You'll enter your account information, and it will be paying you big dividends very quickly. I started using it after we talked to Bill, and I was very excited. Your financial life is not getting simpler. It's getting more complicated. Don't delay. Personalcapital.com slash triangulation will help you make better decisions right now. Smart investing means seeing the whole picture. Start today, personalcapital.com slash triangulation. We thank them for their support 
of triangulation. Seymour Rubenstein is our guest. We're going to talk about your. You're still doing this stuff. You haven't ever. You didn't stop. No. You're still doing software. Right. But I you're not programming anymore. No. That's, well, just maybe sometimes I might do something a little, but nothing serious. Yeah. It's a great hobby. It is a great I hobby. I love it. It's better than crosswords. Oh, it's, there's no question about it's it. It's fun. And when it does what you ask it to do... That's a, that's that's a dream come true. It's so gratifying. It is. Even if it's 10 go to 20, or 20 go to 10, it's just gratifying. Oh, well, I'm past that. I'm sure you're a little <laughs> bit better. You were past that in 1964, I think you were past that. <laughs> <laughs> so you were working at MSI. Um, well, one of the big things that, that I had advantage of working at MSI is I met a very brilliant program by the name of Rob Barnaby. That's where I was going, Rob yeah, Barnaby. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, brilliant, brilliant man. Harvard graduate. A little strange personality, but, you know, he's a Who programmer. Who is it? I mean, he's a programmer. He's a pro know? They're nerds. Yeah, right, exactly. What was strange about him? Uh, I think I shouldn't, shouldn't <laughs> go there. <laughs> How how are his grooming? Uh, well, uh, well, no, that part wasn't bad. Now I'll tell you this: when he was concentrating, yeah, he would write little notes to himself on a on a yellow pad, yeah, and then he would he would and by the way he was a lightning fast typist. Uh -huh. I mean he would type the it would sound like the the machine he was typing on was on fire just a continuous <laughs> it was just so fast. But the expressions on his face, he would jut his chin out and go. <laughs> 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 so that's all. That's the only description I'm going to give him. That's good enough. That's a start. I'm getting a picture of him. Uh, but and he's very talented. Yeah. Extraordinarily talented man. Oh wow. So I was, and he had confidence in me, in the being able to help him develop his work, so that we get noticed. You need somebody like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my specialty has been to find talented people like that and get them to be productive in something that the world wants. Is Rob still around? I think so, but I fell out of touch with him, I'm yeah. afraid. He wrote Wordmaster. Yes. Which was an early word processor. Uh, no, no, no? Was, no, it was actually more of a screen editor. Editor. Because, because it had no printing facilities. Okay. It had no screen formatting facilities. It just simply, when you typed on it, you would see it on the screen. And it would go into the computer, create a computer It would file. store it. Yes. And you could reload it. Yes. And work on it some more. But if you wanted to get a formatted, printed uh, output of it, you had another program that would understand commands that you could embed in the text. Like dot commands. Exactly. Oh, you know about dot commands. Oh, I know about Hey, <laughs> control KS. It's still in my fingers. You well, never, good for you. You never forget that. Are you kidding? That's wonderful. I love it. Of course not. <laughs> you know how, you know, by the way, that's actually a mnemonic. Of course it's a mnemonic. What is it, what is a mnemonic for? S for save. What's K? Uh, oh, there's a le there's a hierarchy, right? So the cake control K's are no, it, no, 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 no. Let me tell you, it had a control K B yeah for the beginning of a block beginning and control K E for the, the end, end of a block right and that way you could mark a block of text that's right and do things with it and move it which exactly. was control K M I can't remember now I'm forgetting some of them. We're talking about early word start commands, and the yeah. dot commands were the formatting commands. So when did you start, when did this start? So you've got, you've got, you start with Ned, which was a very primitive editor, then you do Wordmaster, Rob does Wordmaster, that's yeah, well, a Ned, Ned was done under the auspices of MSI. That was their Work. own thing. That was their own thing. Yeah. And it supported only MSI devices. Okay. And Wordmaster was general, worked on everybody's computer, Ah, and, now that's yeah. huge. Well, it was re re it was totally rewritten. I mean, we didn't. Was really there cro was there software that ran on different computers in the at that at that time? That must have been. Oh a big sure, oh sure. Oh really? Okay. And in fact, there was an early strategy of a lot of computer manufacturers to have their own thing to try and p convince people to buy just their computer. Right. They didn't want it to run on uh, cross platform. Right. 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 Exactly. So you. you uh, by the way, when we're coming to a web thresher works on everything. It's the web. That's the beauty of the web, right? No, it has nothing to do with that. Oh, it's, is it? A, oh, okay, we're going to get to it in a, in a minute. I'm, we're almost there. We only got about 30 more years to go. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go fast. It'll be painless. <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm no, sorry. You probably, I'm in no hurry. <laughs> you've, been over, you've been over this probably a thousand times with people. Yeah, but so, I've, I've never had such a good time doing it. Oh, though. good. I'm that. <laughs> That's because Dvorak's not here. You told me before we began that Dvorak knew stuff that no one else knew. Yes. Why is that? Did you tell him secrets? Well, because he used to vilify something that, that, he did. that he, and he didn't know that I did it. Yeah, and then you'd say, John? 
Yes. It's your friend's. Yes, yes, yes. You know that's mine. Yes. And you go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a pretty good invitation. <laughs> <laughs> you go, ah. Uh, 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 why, why prolong it? I'll tell you what it was. What was it? I invented the end user license agreement. Uh, he told me that. He actually said that. I told him, Seymour Rubenstein's coming in. He said, ask him about the EULA. Yeah. You invented that. You invented that horrible thing. What's horrible about it? Well, no, actually, you had to have it, right? Of course, because otherwise, how are you going to get re reimbursed for what your investment was? Right. No, you need that. I understand from the point but of view the of the publisher. But the big deal about it was that it was, it was on the outside of the package. It was a shrink wrap And the very, the very act of opening the package was a count amount to a signature. Why, I ought to... <laughs> you thought I mean, of that. And was that only, for WordStar that you thought of that? Yes. And not only that, but... but uh, uh, I couldn't find any attorneys who were competent to deal with it. Right. So I just did it myself. I wrote the whole thing. I was look. I was thinking about how, how, how. What are the business prospects for protecting this program? And I realized that I had no copy protection. Right. And so I. Which I don't think, by the way, hurt you at all. I think a lot of people stole the program and then said, "This yeah. is good," and gave you some money. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but they wanted to have the support of the company. Right. right. So that I have they want manuals. Exactly. I. Th I don't think that hurt you. I think that. It, that, that well, it had, it had positive and negative effects. Right. I'm sure you lost I mean, some sales. I mean, I can tell you that in Europe, the, the, sale, uh, the theft was yeah. tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. yeah. So you, there was no copy protection. So how do you protect yourself? Well, the way I thought of it is I thought of it so, just like phonograph records. Right. You own the record, but you didn't own the song. Right. And so you didn't own the software. You own the, you own, you own, you own the media. A copy of the software. And you had the right to use it. You had the right to play it. And that's where and that's where I was coming from. And and we maintain we retain ownership of the exactly. of the of the, exactly. the song, so to speak. Exactly. And then and how did you come up with the idea that if you open the package you agree to this? Well, because there was no way to get a return signature, so they You can't get somebody to sign it. So the very Now they have them to click agree, so you have some Well that's if you if that's if you download it online, so you, right. you're not There's cracking online you're stuff. not cracking a package. Right. So you, th so it was your insight. Oh, we'll just have it whenever they open the package. Right. And by the way, it was contested in court, and you and oh yes, upheld. Sure, because because <laughs> there's no other way to do it. No other way to do it. No. Worked. I don't know if the, if you're a hero. <laughs> you're I'm certainly a, a pioneer. I'm a vilified hero. You're vilified. The shrink wrapped Eula. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You had to do it. And if you, if you didn't do it, you know. If you didn't do it, there'd be no it, way to create value in the business. Exactly. Exactly. I had to do that. You had to do it. So you were, you were peddling Wordmaster around, and uh, people were saying, hey, this is great, but... We want integrated printing. It's got to print. Yeah. What good is this? Did, were there printers even by then? That people, oh, yes. They oh, were yes. dot matrix or the Epsons? The, or? the Daisy Wheel. They were Daisy Wheels. That's right. Yes. That's right. And this was actually kind of clever. It was the, the print... Wheel had the, all the typefaces on a circle, exactly, and it would move the, would spin the circle and print that way. It exactly, was, exactly. It was kind of like a, a. And you can change fonts by changing the wheels. Just like the the ball on a on a Selectric. Exactly. But a, but a little, but it cheaper, basically, well, easier to make. Yes, and of course, it didn't violate any of IBM's patents. Right, it wasn't a Selectric. <laughs> <laughs> Key to the whole thing. So people had Daisy wheel printers, and and so they were starting to think of computers as. At least as potentially as word process. Were there dedicated word processors? Yes, there were. The Wangs there were. Things like that? Yes, there was Wang, Lanier, Videc, Xerox. Very expensive. And that's all they did. The, 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 the cheapest one was the IBM Selectric MTST, $15,000 then. Then, $15,000. Real money. Real money. So you had a Selectric that was hooked up to something that was memorizing what was going on? Kind the tape. Of? It was so hooked up to tape. tape. Wow. Fifteen uh, grand, and not only that, but when you wanted to edit something, you had to you had to start it printing. While I was printing, catch it, and <laughs> <laughs> it was gruesome, gruesome. <laughs> and not only that, but if you were worried about what it looked like, you had to type it three or four times before it got to be where you had the right appearance to but it. But this is still better than a typewriter. Of course, it's better than a typewriter. Typewriters, you know, you know, one of the funny things about typists that I have found is that they hated to type something over again. If you, if you, if it had, That's they, why we invented whiteout, right, exactly. correcto tape, right, all, all things. 
No, I people under twenty five never saw, never don't have no idea well, what a whiteout well, but, is. But, but I don't understand why if you are if you if you have been hired as a typist, what's the difference if you're typing the That's same thing over and over? That's all you're doing. You're going to type tomorrow. But, but, but the psychology of it is that ty that typist hated. It once. Oh God, they hate typing. I'll the pay same fifteen thousand dollars not to have to type that again. Oh, that's, that's good. I'll sell you stuff all day long. <laughs> So, so you got something here because there's very expensive word pro dedicated word processors. You've got a general purpose. And they were garbage because absolutely none of them, none of them could show you on the screen what it looked like when it printed. None of them? None of them. So you had no preview, no capability no. of knowing ahead of time? No, they, you, had to, you had to print it and then look at what was wrong and then go, go back and fill, fill full well with it. Wow, it's terrible. Well, I thought it was terrible. And that's how one of the things that I did with WordStar. The, and the, first, the very first version of WordStar... I put a big ad out that says, what you see is what you get. You invented WYSIWYG, too. No. No? I invented what you see is what you get. Someone else decided to abbreviate it. <laughs> I wonder if I can find an old WordStar ad with Wiz what's what you see is what you get. I bet it's on the Internet. Well, I, I put it in Byte and Interface Age magazines. Those Byte, which was published, uh, coincidentally, in Nashua, New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, that's just pure coincidence, right? Pure coincidence. Why would, why would they start a magazine up there, I don't know. Beats me, I don't know. <laughs> Can't imagine, it's got a, it's such a small population. So, um, did, so did it evolve with the dot command? What, were these Wang commands, these original commands? No, or? we made them up. You had your own? Yeah. We didn't want to be accused of play plagiarism. We had so much room for our creative creativity that we used it. Right. I mean, we invented the whole keyboard layout that we use commands with because the the keyboard manufacturers were so happy with function keys that nobody could ever type without taking their hands off the home key right so this is late 7 1978 yeah there is a, a small market of microcomputers there's they're, they're being made MSI, Altair, the Chromemco, the Sol Processor, they're all out yeah, there processor, processor technology, technology right, Sol yeah that's right which is named after Sol yes um, it was a guy Yes, that's right. Uh, and uh, are there computer trade shows at this point? How do you tell yes, people? Yes, yes. In fact, I demonstrated the very first word version of WordStar was I demonstrated at the April nineteen uh, April nineteen seventy nine of uh, the of the, of the West Coast Computer Fair. Oh, Jim Warren's West Coast Computer Fair. Exactly. Uh, he was on roller skates. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> was that the first West Coast Computer Fair? No, that wasn't the first West Coast Computer Fair. It was, well, it was the first enough, one though. that we demonstrated. Yeah. yeah, And you demonstrated WordStar. Right. And what was the reaction? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. What did people, why were they excited? What was it that they... Well, because it provided a way of getting, uh, uh, it provided a reason for someone who is not a computer nerd to buy a computer. Ah. It was, it was fantastically revolutionary. The first killer app. Right, but and it was a, not just a killer app; it was fundamental. It was the app because it was the app to do. Yeah, and um, that had a lot of ramifications. I believe that. I mean, no one's ever actually physically gave me credit for it, but I believe that's what launched Intel. Did yeah, probably right. Not only launched Intel, they even launched Microsoft. At, well, absolutely launched Microsoft. So, uh, Rob Barnaby's writing this in, in what? It's still assembler. Yes. Pure assembler. Wow. Very at the basic, but because he wrote it in assembler, he could type fast. Well, not only that, but it was uh, well, his genius was to be able to pack all that functionality into forty nine k of RAM. <laughs> Phenomenal. How big was the program itself? Do you know? Uh, it says uh, I'm looking here. It says one hundred thirty seven thousand lines of code. That's correct. Wow. By the wow. way, using IBM productivity techniques, that's 42 million years. <laughs> One guy did it. One guy did and how, it. How long did it take him? Six, six months. months. Six months. <laughs> he really could type fast. He could, yes, but, but, the, the, but he, he didn't lose track of what he, he was, was doing. He was obviously brilliant. Very brilliant. Very brilliant very brilliant. guy. Oh. So I think sometimes people think that you wrote this stuff. No. no I designed it. Yeah. I yeah. embellished it. I. So we blame you for... Control K E, Control K B. Control well, I criticized him. Well, let me put it this way: He came up with the first set, and I criticized it. And he made some changes to it. But I would say that the technical end of implementation was his, and the the conceptual the end was, was, yeah. was mine. Yes.
dot commands were used to say this is this is bold, this is uh, indent this paragraph, uh, new paragraph, all of that stuff. That's right. That's right. And you and the the printer would, the computer I guess would see the dot and then the letters after it and say, oh, don't print that part. Yeah. Do this. Well, in fact, actually, we even had some other funnies where we did foreign translations. The very first foreign translation I did was French. Really? And French uh, has a, a, a some interesting vowels that it does things with. Like the letter E has five different forms in French. There's the accent aigu, accent grave, right? circumflex, accent, 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 and tremly, and plein oui. Hey. <laughs> five different upper e. and lower case for both. Uh, oh. Of course. So the way it worked on the Selectric typewriter is that you, there was a key that had the circumflex and the tremly, and you hit that, and it would wrap, wrap it into the paper, but it did, the, the carrier did not move. It, and so the next letter was over. Letter. The next letter was overprint, and then overprint. The we had to make the printer do the same thing in words that we had to recognize when that was a character, wow. and put an, uh, deliberately insert a backspace in the file. Wow, and it, it, it ASCII's around now. You're doing this in ASCII, yes? Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. Okay, you're not still Epcadic or anything like. You're, you're finally oh, a little, a little more modern. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, Epcadic was very modern for its time. It's just right. that that. Uh, IBM owned it, they won't let anybody else use it, so right. it's uh, stuck with ASCII. Right. So we got CPM, we got, uh, is it a Z80 processor? What are, we, what are you using on these things? I guess it's a well, Z80. We, no, 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 Z80 was, uh, Z80 was something that, that could appeal to the hobbyist because it had a vastly more powerful basic instruction set. But unless you're programming in assembly language, it doesn't matter. Right. Once you start programming in a high-level language, you don't care what the processor is. You're using an 8080 or? Could be anything. It could be eighty. Doesn't matter. 80, 80, 80, 80, well, we don't 80, have higher lang level languages. You're writing assembler, or are we writing in? When are we going to start writing in higher level languages? Well, not into, the word stuff is always written in assembler. It's always assembler. Yeah. Compact and fast. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm impressed that he did that in six months. That's mind boggling. Well, actually, there's something else that happened. It's an interesting vignette that I haven't told too many people about. Um, about two or three years into into Word uh, 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 Micro Pro, uh, Epson came to us with a small computer that you could carry around with you. And they I wanted. I had one of those. It had a little paper tape printer. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was it was like a Model 100. Oh really? Yeah, it was battery powered. Yeah. Well, well, they had a computer like that, and and they wanted us to put they wanted us to put Wordster on it. So I showed it to my development guys, and I, I got from them a. a that was going to take them six months yeah. to make a, an adaptation. I said, that's much too long. The whole program was written by one guy in six months. And I called up Rob. And I said, Rob, uh, I have this assignment for you. You're going to have to pay me a lot of money for that. <laughs> huh? How much you want? hundred dollars an hour. I said, done. <laughs> and how long did it take him? Two weeks. What? Two weeks! <laughs> so help me two what? weeks. Two weeks it, it took him. him longer. He would have made more money. <laughs> he wasn't interested in that. Good I mean, care. I'm telling you, he's a pure technical person, yeah. brilliant beyond beyond. Uh, Dvorak, Dvorak says he used to drive around a large Rolls Royce limo dressed as a chauffeur, with <laughs> nobody in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a hearse. Maybe it was a hearse. I I mean, if there was someone in the back, he wouldn't want to talk to him anyway. <laughs> so, this is the this really but is. But two a weeks, huge, can you imagine? Two weeks. I had that Epson computer, and it, and it only had like, you know, it was like 40 characters, four lines yeah, display. That's, it was that's, right, that's display. right, that's right, that's right. But it had WordStar on it. There's an Osborne computer over here. Yeah. Came oh, that's, with that, WordStar. That's an interesting story in itself. You want to hear about that? That was a big selling point. The K-Pro, the Osborne, they came with software. Yes, yes. yes. Adam Osborne, so, what a character he was. Oh, very, very much so. He, he came to see WordStar when I showed it to the West Coast Computer Fair. And he looked at it and he says, you're going to be very successful with this. I said, well, I hope so. <laughs> at any rate, he came to me several years later when he was going to put together his computer company. And we made a deal. We made a deal and I sold him WordStar for a certain amount of money up front. Plus, certain, for, we only, only paid him for serial numbers. When he used up a serial number, he would send us money. Yeah, that's funny. So there was no manufacturing cost on our part whatsoever. That's a good deal. 
Well, for everybody. It was a $2,000 computer. It was all in one. It was portable. It was 30 pounds. Transportable. Transportable. We have one over here, I'm telling you. It's like a suitcase. Yeah. But it came with WordStar. It was a huge selling point. Huge, yes. Because it came with the software that you needed. Yes. So, Anna was preparing to go public, and someone came to me and said, would you like to sell your stock rather than wait until it goes public? And I said, yes. I want you to know I was the only person who owned that stock who had managed to make money with it. Oh, yeah, because right after that he announced the Osborne too, <laughs> and, and sunk the ship. <laughs> the, sunk the ship, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was. It was. It was. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, too bad. So uh, in 1979, half a million dollars in sales. 1980, 1.8 million dollars in sales. Not, this is the. This is MicroPro WordStar. Yes. 1981, $5.2 million of sales. Then you go to PC DOS, the IBM PC comes out. $23 million in 82. That's right. $45 million in 83. That's right. In 1984, the year we went public, over $72 million, beating out every other company in the world. Number one, <laughs> number one software company in the world. That's correct. Like bigger than Microsoft, bigger than anybody. Bigger than anybody, that's right. What happened? Hmm. <laughs> Travesty upon travesty. This is this is legendary, and yes, I want to hear it, it from the horse's mouth, because okay. no one no one tells this story right. Well, there was there was a uh, a philosophy then amongst amongst venture capitalists that the, the sooner as you can, particularly when the once the company goes public, is to ditch the founder. You, I was the founder, but there were lots of other founders of lots of other companies, and they all were getting ditched. Yeah. Including one very famous one called Steve Jobs. Yep. He got ditched too. Yep. Everyone got ditched. Yep. But Apple was smarter than the others. They brought their they brought their guy back. They didn't bring me back. Even though I had the opportunity where I brought them something. I brought them something very valuable. I had a spreadsheet program that was that could beat the crap out of out of Lotus it. one, two, three. I was willing I to give it. them for nothing and just when I wanted some nice stuck back. I loved it. Quattro Pro. Yeah, well, that's what it became. One that's of the greatest. Well, anyway, we'll get. So you have a heart attack, though. Yes. The go, company goes public and you, get, and you get sick. Yes. Was it the stress? Probably. Yeah, it must have been very stressful. It's very. Yeah. Well, of course, they were, they were dinking around with stuff that I had devoted my life and all the intensity that I could muster into it. Right. And they were just treating it as another deal, you know, just right. nothing to them. Right. And there's also competitive pressures. I mean, uh, what's the, what's the follow-up to WordStar? Uh, I had something. I had, I had some really good stuff. I had, uh, it was, it was, uh, I had so, so something called Datastar, Infostar, Reportstar. I remember those, yeah. And it was all a scheme where you could build your own financial type of application Without doing any programming, yeah. it was all all specification oriented. Yeah, they threw it away. They threw it away because I wasn't going to be around to lead them. I mean, they were so stupid. So somehow, blind stupidity following their formula. So somehow they talk you into signing your stock into over into non-voting shares. Basically, yes. so, somehow, somehow they you. blackmail me. You do it, or and by the way, I signed the papers to do that. While I was in the intensive care unit in the hospital, recovering from a heart attack. Talk about vultures. I think, I mean, <laughs> it's vul like I think I'm going to die. Here. I, like think, <laughs> I think I'm going to die, and I said, "Well, at least what I'll the hell? what the hell, right? Exactly. What am I going to lose at this point?" And even as the company was crumbling, it didn't matter. No one, no one wanted my advice or, or leadership or anything. So the hell. So and and at this point, you've got um, Word Perfect's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. You've got, I remember Zyrite, I used to love Zyrite. Microsoft's mm -hmm. going to be doing a word processor. Had Word come out yet by this time? It was about to, wasn't well, it? Well, they came out with, with a Multimate. Multimate, that's which right. I, which I always looked at Multimate as a, a unique form of, of sexual diversion. <laughs> that's, your, <laughs> that's your line when you... The company's not good at naming. Microsoft and Multimate, you're right, I agree with you. They got, <laughs> they got some problems at naming things. I agree with you. There's something going on in Bill Gates' psyche up there. I don't know what that is. Multimate. Multimate. I never thought of it that way. Well, actually, though, calling it Word. Well, it's a good it, name. It's a good name. It's the right name. Kind of like Word Star. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. Kind of. Kind of like. 
Um, so are you completely out of the company by the by the mid '80s, or did they force you out? Yeah, they forced me out because I was was in, because I didn't have voting stock. They could fire me. Right. And I had no way to really retaliate. Yeah. But I found a way to retaliate anyway. Well, so, okay, well, I want to hear that. What about Word Star Two Thousand? That wasn't you. No. <laughs> because that was that was a nightmare. <laughs> that was an atrocious, absurd, <laughs> stupid piece of crap. It was. And it was. the point is that the public, because they loved Wordstar so much, they believed in they it. They believed and they thought it was you, unfortunately. Well, I, I, I deny the rep. Yep. I had nothing to do with it. It was terrible. Not only that, but the company legs behind developing a, a, a Windows version of Wordstar for so many years. Was, they right. just threw away the business. Right. But the most stupid thing they did is the year following the $72 million, we dropped back to $45 million because they gave away all of, our all of our dealers and forced them to go to distributors. And they all right. said, they all gave us the finger and said, we don't want to do that. Right. I mean, they were so stupid, it was beyond belief. Dvorak, beyond belief. Dvorak says, I'm, I'm reading a Dvorak column, he says, the WordStar might have been the most pirated program uh, of all time. Were oh, you yeah, aware uh, of that? Yes. What, what was your thought on that? Did it bug you? You used uh, to drive Bill Gates crazy. Yes, I know. Well, he came. He came. We came up with a scheme, which they didn't like. Him, but he came up with the, the best scheme of all. What was that? Which is you had to activate it through the internet. Right. Which users still hate. If you, there was. It doesn't matter. It's the only way to ensure you get paid for your work. I understand. Uh, one of the things people hated about WordStar 2000 was the copy protection. I know. WordStar never had any copy protection. That's right. That's why they hated it. They, this, this. Why did WordStar? Why didn't you put copy protection on WordStar? It was too late. You would have had, had you could, if you could have. Yeah, but the way it was implemented was a bad way. By the way, how are we doing on time? We're almost out of time. Is somebody signaling you? Do you have to go somewhere? No, not at all. But I wanted to talk about the patents. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get. Right. We're going to get to Thresher. <laughs> <laughs> is she your is she your publicist? No, she's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> right? I know how that is. I know how that is. We're talking to Seymour Rubenstein. We're going to come back and talk about what you're up to now. Enough oh. history. Unless you want some more. You got anything more you want to tell me? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're talking about, about 30 Quattro years. Quattro Pro. 30 years I loved Quattro Pro. I don't blame you. You sold it to Borland. Yes. Yeah. And I think after, I, after I offered it to Micro Pro for nothing, for no money, all they had to do was give me stock. Stupid, crazy idiots. Well, whatever happened to them? Who? Those guys. Fred Haynes, what is it, Fred Haynes? Was that what it was? Oh, 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 Fred Adler? Adler. I think he's still alive so, somehow. <laughs> I'll, I'll the hope the if best that can be said of him. <laughs> I, if, I hope if he's suffering, he thinks I'm to blame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have more with Stephen Rubenstein, and we will talk about what you're doing uh, now in just a bit. Triangulation brought to you today by 99designs, the world's largest graphic designs marketplace. 99designs has over a quarter of a million designers waiting for you to stop by. If you have a restaurant and you need menus, if you have a website and you need a, a, a design, if you have a, a business you need a landing page for on Facebook, maybe you want to do a, an app design, this is the place to go. Just visit the landing page design page. You can see all the great landing pages that have been designed by a quarter of a million amazing designers. Here's how it works. You tell 99designs what you need. Dozens of designers from their community will submit designs created just for you. You give the designers the feedback that you need to help them refine their designs, and you select and pay for your favorite. Look, you know, it's like Seymour. You don't have to be a computer programmer. You don't have to be a designer. Maybe you have a skill in one area, but you need help from somebody who's got a skill in another area. These designers are great. There are 2,061 design contest going on right now payments this month alone to designers 1.9 million dollars but you can get your next graphic design for as low as 199 dollars visit 99designs.com slash tri and we're going to throw in a power pack of services for free it's worth 99 dollars the power pack gives you more designer time and attention they'll bold highlight and feature your design in their marketplace you'll get nearly twice as many designs you will get a beautiful we have the t-shirt design we got from 99 designs was amazing 
just loved it. Loved working with the designers, too. You'll love working with 99designs. Go to 99designs.com slash T-R-I. Get that power pack of savings and start, get, start getting something beautiful going on your, uh, on your uh, website or your business today. 99designs.com slash T-R-I. More with uh, Seymour Rubenstein, our guest. This is fun, talking about the old times. We want to talk about the future, too, in just a second. We're having a good time, though. I am having a blast, <laughs> Seymour. You're, you're just a hoot. Um, it was called Surpass, and then you sold it to Borland. Right. And uh, they, they, they renamed it Quattro. They renamed it Quattro. Which is not a great name. It's not? Eh, Quattro. What does that well, mean? Well, they had, well, that, well, it's one, two, three. It's competing with Oh, one, two, it's three. the fourth. Exactly. <gasps> I never got that. So oh the big gosh. one, so it was VisiCalc and then Lotus 1, 2, 3, and Quattro Pro was one better. No, no. no. They had a program called Quattro, which is, oh, a, which wow. is a terrible piece of junk. Oh. And so they, that's why they knew they had to buy something else, and that's why they bought Surpass, and they renamed it Quattro Pro. Ah, which was a great program. It was, yes. I loved, I used Quattro Pro. I was the guy who used Quattro Pro. Everybody else is using Lotus 1, 2, 3. They were compatible. Yeah, slash key. Yeah, among other things. Among other things. Um, so, okay, so after all that, are, were you bitter? I got over being bitter because I realized that what I have to do is just be smarter. And I hope you got some money out of it so you didn't have to worry about money, right? Uh, depends. They didn't rob you. No, they didn't rob me. But, you know, once you get the taste of really being a successful entrepreneur, you yeah. never want to give up. You get hooked on that, don't you? Get hooked up on it. Yeah. And uh, I made some of my financial errors. So. Uh, you invested in new companies? You tried invested, to start new companies? Uh, yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, I it's had one very successful one, which was a DRM company. Oh, really? <laughs> and that worked very well. But, uh, but, but as, I, as I did a, a program called Web Sleuth. Okay, and which you kind of well, um, I may be wrong, but it feels like Web Thresher is related to this. But so it let's is, talk. It is. Web Sleuth was a search program for Windows ninety eight, right? It took uh, the it took it like it made Web Windows search better. I have to really explain what it does. Okay, now there is a a uh, an applica uh, uh, an application philosophy that's called scraping. Scraping. And scraping refers to being able to take the results of search engines and scra scrape the results and amalgamate them. Right. We don't do that. But Web Sleuth did that. No. No. No, we never did that. Oh, okay. So we don't do scraping, even though that we, some might think that we did. People accuse you of that. Exactly. Because what we, all we do is we use the URLs that they suggest, but all the content is something that we generate. We generate all the content because our objective is to help you recognize what's valuable immediately before you click on it. Right. You know, it's one thing to get results immediately. It's another thing to find out something that you really want. Right. What, you t what takes longer? The, the, the ability to see a lot of garbage on the screen or to make some sense out of it? So what we're after is helping you make sense out of it without going through, w without worrying about how long it takes you to look at it. Because that's instantaneous. So that's something you can layer on top of. The, it all the raw has to, results, you can add some intelligence to Exactly, it. exactly. And that's what we do. So is that what Web Sleuth was? It was that was the original intention, but it was, too, it was, it was before its time. The, 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 the speed of the Internet was still primitive. It was that's dialogue. the problem. The Internet came along and clobbered that. No, it didn't clobber it. It just it was too slow. Was it using the Internet? Yes. Oh, it was? Okay. It was, Web yes. Sleuth. Well, I'm an idiot. Yeah, okay, I get yeah. it. But this is My the original late 90s. This is not... Right. Too right. early. My, my original patent, though, had nothing to do with the Internet. Because it was based upon the fact that I saw that the way people were doing with their documents was printing them and putting them in file cabinets. <laughs> now, now, really, here you, you store it on a computer, but you were putting your documents in file cabinets. In a real live file cabinets, you went to a drawer and pulled it out and started, started, started little leafing through the papers. Hey, we're old habits die hard. By the way, there are people that still do that. They're, I still get emails from people who say, consider the environment, please don't print this email. I think, who prints emails? And obviously, there are a lot of people who get emails and print them. And then I met a guy. He said, yeah, my secretary prints all the emails and gives them to me. <laughs> and I go through them. I say what to do, and I give it back to her, and she sends it. You're Bri right. Brilliant. 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 
kind of defeats the whole purpose. Well. <laughs> Send me a letter in that case. <laughs> snail mail. Snail mail. <laughs> so you're right. I think people, old habits die hard. They want they do, physical yes. paper, whatever. Well, but there's a problem. Because if, if the only way you have of accessing a document is if you know its name, you run out of names pretty quick. Now, in the old days, there used to be only an eight-character name followed by the three-character extension. Yeah. That was that was ridiculous. That was horrible. But with 256 character names, all like this give you the give you the ability to invent nonsense names that you would Even never longer, remember anyway. You'll never remember. Yeah. <laughs> right. Perfect. Just what we need. <laughs> do you do you think it could have been you you it could have been Google? I mean, you were Google. Web Sleuth was around before Google, right? Sure. Not only that, but I patented the original uh, algorithm for searching before there was a Google. But you're not a patent troll. You wouldn't go around suing people over that, would you? <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have the money. Ah, uh, you would have, had you. Well, why not? You could get somebody to do it uh, on a contingency basis. Not anymore. No. Uh, too late? Too late. Uh. Too late because I sold the rights to uh, I love it that your son's working with you. I think that's great. Hmm. Did he grow up in the software industry around this? Or Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let, let me put it this way. He was subjected to it. <laughs> he had no choice. <laughs> he had no choice. So he's worked with you on this new thing. This is called Web Thresher. Yes. Tell me what Web Thresher does. Well, it pretty much does what Web Sleuth did, but much, much better. Much, 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 much better. And uh, you'll have to... Now, I can't use it, right? You have to... It, you can't it, use it because I didn't send it to you. But we, we did it as a client program because... Oh, it's a, you install it. It's a desktop program. To, yes. Okay. Uh, the, the reason for that is because we want to be sure we did not violate any terms of use of any of the search engines. You were worried about the EULAs? Isn't well, that ironic? No, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. It is. I invented the shrink wrapped EULA. <laughs> I did, I did, but you know. But so I don't want, I don't want to offend anyone. No. So you sell this as, a, as, as a well, software? Well, we're not selling it yet. Okay, you're gonna. We're gonna do something with it and we may sell it to another company and they okay. can decide how they're gonna sell so it. So all the companies are watching now, they wanna see, pretend this is the West Coast Computer Fair. And I- <laughs> They'd be standing 10 deep, at least. <laughs> We're surrounding you, Seymour. That's fine. We wanna know, the guy who created WordStar, the guy who created Quattro Pro, what's next from Seymour Rubenstein? He's created Web Thresher. Show me, show me how Web Thresher works here. Right. You've got it, I don't have it, so I can't see it. Okay, well, I'll show it to you. Oh, this is an existing search. What's we did a search earlier for uh, pig, pygmy goats. <laughs> yeah, right. And it created this whole, what is this? What am I getting now? So you, it looks like a search engine. You, you entered in uh, Nigerian pygmy goats. Now, and you know, I you have three columns here. What are these yeah. three columns? So the first column is a, a generated index of phrases to the results. Reading the Nigerian... Differences of Nigerian pygmy goats. For people who love the littlest dairy goats, how to raise Nigerian. So this is all sorts of stuff. Yeah, but what's, 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 what's interesting about it and what's unique about it is the fact that as you look at this, you realize that you're seeing ways of looking at the data that you never would have thought of otherwise. This doesn't look like a search, uh, search result. It doesn't. It's but it where is. are you getting the data from? How are you doing that? We're using the URLs that the search engines propose to us, and we're investigating every one of them online, in real time, and developing our own results. You did this actually very quickly. It took yes. seconds to seconds. generate this That's page. That's correct. Yeah, so yeah, now the second, review, second column has results. And uh, we show results in, 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 in several forms, including s different kinds of abstracts. We have both a context abstract and a, and, and a synopsis abstract. Now, synopsis abstract is your average abstract. It tells you the story of the document. Right. The context abstract contains the sentences that you have in your original query that, c that are shown in the document. No one does anything like that. The whole idea is when you look at that, you know immediately whether you care about looking at it. Right. And then to help you investigate it even further, like for example, I, I'm looking at this one. If I just click anywhere in here, it then puts up a new web page. Oh, on the right, you get the full page that you get were the full page you were looking at. I get it. So the whole idea here is that you can the whole idea here is that you can get what you want by instant recognition 
rather than separately clicking and looking and clicking and looking and clicking and, looking and so throwing 90% of it away anyway. This, this would be for somebody who's researching a topic. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Certainly. A writer or a student. Or an analyst. An analyst. Actually, I refer to the whole class of people as knowledge workers. Yeah. Anyone who wants to go a little bit more than skin deep and who does not want to be bothered with useless results, this is the product. And, and what happened? Why did, you, why did you want to do this? Because, because it's an outgrowth of how you can put away documents and not worry about what the name of it is. <laughs> you don't have to print them. <laughs> what you care about is what, what the content, content is. Content, right. The content is what matters. So this could search your stuff as well? Absolutely. Oh, okay. So it's not just web searches. No. No, 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 no. We have not. We have. We didn't include. We had that in Web Sleuth. We didn't include the code that's for this one. But eventually, you could search documents as yes, well. Yes, you could search you documents. You know, what? I like that. Yeah, I like that. Not only that, we could we could even adapt it so you could see protected databases if you have the passwords and you are. You know, you are so if you're a lawyer and you're working with LexisNexis, you could use this to synthesize. If you're a lawyer, you could also use it to analyze all the all the, all the dep depositions, all the testimony. Oh yeah, you got it. Boy, that must be a. You're right. That would be very useful. Very yeah. useful, yes. That's, I'm I mean, thrilled that you're still doing this. I love it. You could just be relaxing on the beach. No, I don't want to do that. Enjoying the Besides multi mates. Which, uh, <laughs> Your wife didn't like that one, I don't uh, think. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Depends that, on your interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's so great to meet you and so great to talk to you. John sings your praises all the time. Dvorak loves you. Well, I, well yeah. John and I get along. I, I think, by the way, I think the work that he does is phenomenal as well. He's the greatest. Yeah, he is. And he's never going to retire either. No, I hope I hope not. Why? Because he comes on our shows regularly. <laughs> I, yeah. have to, yeah. I, I have to find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I love John. He yeah. gave me my start in the business 20-some years ago. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Webthresher.com. So, but people, now you just teased people because they can't buy it? No. They can't do sale. it? They can't use it? Well, it's wait. not for sale, but we'll, an we'll answer emails and tell you what's happening. Okay, so keep up uh, by, by visiting. Just you can also visit, you can, you can, like it on Facebook, and that way you'll... Yes, uh, and you can also send us email at info at, info at webthresher.com. Okay. Info at webthresher.com if you want yes. to know. If you want to keep, uh, keep up on all of this. Yes. I just liked it, but nothing happened. Tell your son that he has to get the Facebook page going so I can like it. So okay. be the first to like it. I am the first to like it. Ever. I hope, I hope you're not the first. I better not be, but it does say I am the first. Be the first to like it. I don't know where that comes well, from. Well, you're catching me at an early stage of the launch. I love that. We got an exclusive. There we go. Now I did it on uh, Facebook. Hey, if you, to get me my iPad. I want to show you uh, Hulu Plus. Have you visited Hulu Plus lately? You, I love it. You can binge. The best way to watch television shows. Binge on your favorite TV shows anytime. There we go. Thank you, Carson. Uh, I'll log into my uh, Hulu Plus account just to show you what I'm doing right here. Um, HD quality. The streams look fantastic. And Hulu Plus has all the best hit shows. Thousands of TV shows. Uh, a selection of acclaimed movies, too. They got the whole Criterion collection on here. It, in HD, and you can watch it. Uh, on your on your tablet, I like to hear uh, one of our all-time favorite British actors. Oh, this is oh my goodness, the Good Son. Look at that. I'm gonna we'll put this up. Looks so good on Hulu Plus. I gotta tell you, the quality on here is fabulous. And there's always something to watch. That's what I like about it. Seven dollars ninety nine cents a month. Stream as many TV shows, as many movies as you want on Hulu Plus. Um, Oh, so these are all... Oh, I get it. I picked British actors, and I'm getting some great British actors here. Let me show you, though. You, you know, I, don't, I can't stay up late for Jimmy Kimmel. It's too late for me. Oops. So what do I do? I watch it on Hulu Plus. That's what I do. I never miss the late-night TV shows. They're all here. And you know what? You can just go right to the best parts, which is... <laughs> it's time to play Water, I love it. I probably shouldn't play this. They're going to get mad at me. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> um, look, here's the deal. They, By the way, there's aw there's awesome original content here. Uh, Seth Meyers, The Awesomes, Moon Boy with Chris O'Dowd from Bridesmaids. Love him. Lots of exclusive stuff. Lots of, there's, oh, The Mindy Project. I'm, I'm behind on The Mindy Project. Got to watch. 
You know what? I'm going to take a break and just watch some TV. Why don't you go to HuluPlus.com slash twit, and we got two weeks absolutely free for you right now waiting for you. HuluPlus.com slash twit. I didn't see this episode. HuluPlus.com slash twit. Thank you, Hulu Plus. So, uh, life is good. You're enjoying yourself. You're having fun. You're never going to stop selling software. No. Why should I? What do you think of this whole computer thing? What is that? I mean, this is the computer now we all use is this, is the smartphone. Yes. We don't, we don't yes, carry I, around I, computers anymore. I have one myself. So that, that changes things, doesn't it, a little bit? There's no keyboards. There's no command. No, there's the no screen, control the KS is, anymore. This, that's true, but the, the screen isn't big enough to really absorb a lot of information. The human eye is capable of taking in much more information as you can see on the telephone. Yeah, I agree. I mean... And yet this is how we mostly are using it. Well, they're going to have displays that scroll out and, I mean, yeah. this, you know, this, this... Project. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. iPhone, Android phone, what do you like? I, I have the iPhone. Yeah. But the, 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 uh, the, the uh, Samsung phones are pretty good, too. Do you ever use a tablet? Of course. Which, do you like them? I mean, do you, are you interested in them at all? Yes, I am, and we're going to have a web fresher on tablets. Good. Too. Yes. Good. And where do you get your programmers? Who does the software these days? It's, well, believe it or not, I found another, bar, uh, another Rob Barnaby. Really? Yes. His name is Garner Cheney, oh. and he's positively brilliant. Is he a local guy? or Local guy, yes. How do you find people like that? I don't know. They find me, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to know if Rob Barnaby's still around. I, I get the feeling he was quite a character. You know, we've interviewed... I'm sure that he still is. Oh, yeah. And we've had, we had Captain Crunch on this show a couple of times. He wrote, it. He wrote what, Electric Pencil? Was that his? No, In that was fourth. Michael Schreyer. Schreyer wrote that. He wrote... Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, con yeah Control-Wise Delete Line, but it's Yank. It's Yank the Line. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think many of the commands are preserved in some of the newer Unix tools, like um, if we're, if, Pico if and If MicroPro is still alive, they could, they could, they could claim right. ownership. Right. It's like the Hayes command set. Nobody, yeah. There's nobody around anymore to Do you know that the, AT. The, Bill Gates was so interested in trying to steal our thunder that he actually managed to copy a few things from us, and nobody ever pursued him for it. So, like for example, what? mail merge. That, that's right. You had great mail merge. I remember that. Yeah. I, I invented it. I you invented, invented that? I invented the was name. It? I invented the concept. And he stole it. Mail merge was brilliant. Thank you. You'd have a list of names. Thank You'd you. You'd have a, a variable in the, in the text. The whole idea was to be able to send right. bills to people that, were, that right. came off a database. Right. But so they had different text based upon what they found. You invented that? Yes, I did. Wow. So you like living in Solano? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's fabulous. It's fabulous, she well, says. Well, I, I used to live in Belvedere. Yeah, that's okay. That's more than okay. That's a nice island. It sure is. Yeah, did you have a beautiful bridge view? And oh, I bet you did. Oh, absolutely. Oh. I, could, I could see from Alcatraz Island all the way across oh. the whole sweep of the San Francisco Peninsula. Belvedere is... All the way to Richardson. Yeah, Bay and the whole gorgeous. Thing. It was gorgeous. Yeah, that is really the place to live if you. But can. unfortunately, due to my financial troubles, I lost that place. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, we live in a double wide now in Solano. <laughs> Good. No. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I can tell you other stories too, but you have to come. You'll have to have me back for that. I will have you back any time. Okay. And I will make Dvorak show up next time. <laughs> okay. And we'll have... I'll be happy to talk we'll about current drink. events with, with Dvorak. Good. Sure. Well, I want... You know, golly. Did you go to the homebrew re reunion? You probably didn't. You weren't a member of the homebrew No, sure. Right, no. Yeah. That must have been something. They just did that. Yeah. Brought all those guys back. Yeah, everybody's saying, please have them back. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> everybody used WordStar. That's... You know, that's what surprises me is that... I mean, I figure that half the audience has no idea what we're talking about. And WordStar, what's that? But then the other half of the audience is, is uh, you know, old enough to have used it. And we'll never forget it. I mean, that was, for, for most of us, our first word processor. Thank you very much. Yeah, great product. Immortal. <laughs> Immortal product. 
It should have led to a successful company. Well, yeah, I mean, it could have been Microsoft, I suppose. It was throttled stillborn. Yeah, that's sad. It is. That's really sad. Well, uh, see, I grew up uh, basically without a father. I I didn't have any money at all. So they bought me off. I mean, I controlled more than 40% of the company, and they bought me off by converting my shares to uh, non-voting. And these were ve venture capitalists who had invested in you and yes, had, they had the other 60% or no, whatever. No, 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 They didn't no, no. have. No, they had 20%. They didn't have uh, voting sh enough, a majority of voting no, shares. No, no. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I held So they basically it. tricked you into doing it when you were very no, ill. No, 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 they didn't trick me. I knew, I knew what, it was, what they were doing. Right. I knew but you were ill? I was ill and I, had no, no, I didn't feel I had any choice. I didn't have any fight left in me. Yeah. I can't fight. Did blame. you have members of the board who supported you, or did they all agree this is what we want to do? Once I was sick, I think they went along with it. Yeah, they were worried about losing you, probably. Maybe so. They thought, "What do we do uh, if we lose Seymour? We not, you Maybe know, so. We got to prepare so. for." Maybe so. They keep doing that to me. They said, "What well, if you get hit by a bus? But, but, what are we going to do?" But look, we were talking about 1984. Look how long I'm going to slow around. Ha ha. Exactly. Ha ha. Thank you very much. <laughs> And whatever happened to that Fred guy, anyway, huh? I don't wasn't know. There, I don't care. Wasn't there some? I want. I keep thinking there was some sort of cult allegations and stuff like that. There was Est or stuff like that. What was that? What was that? Was Millard? That was Millard. Yes. He was an Estie. He was. Yes. And he sued you. Oh, that's that. I'll tell you that. that I, I must tell you about that because he made a mistake, but but uh, an understandable mistake. One mistake. What happened was that he had a falling out with his two engineers that helped him with starting the business. And they sued him. And my wife, who is a friend with one of them, attended the trial as an observer. <laughs> and so he thought that somehow I helped finance oh. that lawsuit. And oh, I had so he nothing, got angry. And he got angry. And oh, I had nothing to do with that's it. That's too bad. I had absolutely so nothing. It was just a nothing, misunderstanding. A total misunderstanding. Oh, that's sad. So I really wish I could still talk to Bill because I'm sure he would really realize that he made a mistake and uh. had, because had nothing to do with it. The other wife. Not you, wife. Wife. The other wife. The other multi-mate. <laughs> I'm not going to forget that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's so, and Bill's no longer with us. Oh, no, he's still around. Oh, hey, Bill. See, Seymour wasn't mad. Uh, you, you forget, he had nothing to do with that. I didn't. I really didn't, Bill. Call him. Have a uh, beer together. Yeah, send me an, uh, send me a, an email on info at, uh, info at webthresher.com. Webthresher there you go. There you go. This is, but, but see, you're a good example of what was what really was needed, which was somebody who could tame programmers <laughs> and get them doing it all rowing, at least one rowing in the right direction. Well, this is this is this is this was Steve Jobs' specialty. Exactly. I mean, he exactly. could he could marshal people into doing things that he himself could not do. But it, of course not. But it's interesting to hear that Rob Burnaby Barnaby Burnaby by himself wrote WordStar. One man. One man. No no. Uh, application these days is written one, one man person. in 49 K of, of yeah, memory. Unbelievable. K. I'm not talking about the gigabytes. I'm talking K. about K. Not even megabytes. K. Well, I look at the uh, original VisiCalc is is something like an 8K download. Yeah. It's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all you had in those but days. Word you had to make it work. Word preceded by VisiCalc by a couple of years. Oh yeah, yeah. But oh, well, no. Yes, it did. Not Lotus 123 VisiCalc. Yes, VisiCalc. Did it? When did VisiCalc come out? Physical came out in. It was on uh, the Apple II. Yeah, it came out in eighty, in, in 80 something. Oh, but, wow. I, but I came out with WordStar in seventy nine. Wow, you did. You really were the pioneer. I'm telling you, that, uh, the, in fact, Visical was originally working on the Apple II, which used the Motorola processor. Right, crappy why, 6502. Why? Why did Motorola not succeed where Intel did? You're looking at him. <laughs> wow. You're looking at him. That's interesting, because WordStar was first on Intel. I'm an unsung hero for Intel, yeah. and he, they, they don't even know it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Again, killer app, sold a lot of computers. I mean, people uh, didn't care what, the, what what was in the computer. Well, was who Intel cares about the processor? Even then, they didn't care. They cared about the what fact that they could do. buy this machine that saved them do. fantastic amounts of money and right. effort. Right, It's all about the software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a very good I point. Mean, I mean, when, when the IBM PC came out, for $5,000, which it seems like a phenomenal amount of money, but it was nothing compared to 
Well, but for five thousand dollars, you could buy yourself an IBM PC, XT, nineteen eighty one, and 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 WordStar. Right. And you had a word processing machine that you couldn't duplicate for less than twenty five thousand yeah, dollars. And point. even then, it wasn't as good. Yeah. Because it didn't do so. It didn't show you on the screen what it looked like when it printed. When Windows came along, you were already out of it by by then. When Windows came along, or no? No, no, not quite. So, did you say, okay, we got to move to uh, a windowing platform? Oh, I knew that before I even started. It was obvious. Yeah. I mean, let me put it this way. I was with Bill Gates when he was sat, sat there looking at the Xerox star. Steve Jobs? No. It's Bill Gates. Bill Gates. So he too did made that trip to uh, Park. No, no. They were there at the sh at his trade show. At trade show. I, I what did he say? What did he th He's looking at this thing. He it's got he, mouse. It's got was, windows. He was had his hands clasped in front of him. He was rocking back and forth. He was <laughs> as looking. As he, would, as he was wanting to do. And I said, look, look at it, Bill. He says, just look at this. Just look at this. I said, and I looked at it. It was fab fabulous. And I loved it. Interesting. Now, you understand that, that uh, I forget the man's name now, who was running Winds of Insecalc. He tried to duplicate that. But, oh, yeah. But he didn't succeed. He did. He was trying to do it with smoke and mirrors. That's and right. No, no real programming. Dan Bricklin. No, Steve Fleistra. Oh, Fleistra. Uh, yeah, Fleistra. Oh, Dan Fleistra. Dan Fleistra. Fleistra, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was trying to do it in DOS, right? Like with Windows and DOS. What was he doing? I never really got a good look at, it, but it was all fake. He was using. A, he, he's, he wasn't even using a microcomputer. He was using a deck computer. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's not. <laughs> that's not kosher. <laughs> well, there was a lot of things that were not kosher, but the the problem is that he never reached a proper agreement with Dan Brooklyn and, and, uh, and, and his partner. Right, Frankston. Yeah, Frankston. Yeah. I met them, nice guys. But oh yeah, we've had them on this show. They're great. Yeah, love them both. Yeah, I like them too. Um, very sweet guys. <laughs> mm hmm. Hmm. No, I, I met with, uh, with and Mitch uh, Capor has been on this show. Yes. Mr. Lotus, one, two, three. Yes, sir. I I met with Bill Gates many times. What kind of guy was Bill? Well, he still is. Did he, is did he remind you of Rob uh, at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. He wasn't nerdy in that way. No, nerdy for sure, but not not nerdy that way. Yeah. No, Bill. Smart guy. Very very brilliant man. But I, in fact, let me just take a moment and tell you about my first deal with Bill Gates. I was with I was with Emsai at the time as the marketing director, and he and his buddy, uh, what was his name again? Uh, Paul Allen. Paul Allen, yes. They came to me and they they wanted to sell Emsai, a an assembler. A linkage editor and a Fortran compiler. This is before BASIC. Before BASIC, yeah. Oh, no, no, they had BASIC, but still, this is something they acquired from somebody else. Oh, I see. Yeah, so they're trying to sell it to us. So I looked at it and I said, well, if you're willing to build a linkage editor that can w automatically develop overlays, then I'll take it. They loved that. They took it and they agreed to penalties, which you'd be still be paying today. <laughs> Never did it. Never did it. <laughs> But this was, uh, because you have such small memory, you've got to solve this problem. Of course. And you do it with overlays. Of course. Uh, it's the only way you can get anything done, because you've got no memory. I, yeah, in fact, we did, we did that with WordStar. We had an overlay. Did you get overlays? Yes. yes. So this was something to replace what's going on in memory with another thing. Yeah, you have a section of memory that you use as an overlay area. Right. Yeah. And his didn't do that? No. <laughs> and he no. never did do that? No, never did. Never did. No, no, no. <laughs> But, still this, so, but it was the it was the Insire or the Altair that he first saw the cover of Popular uh, Mechanics. Popular Electronics. Popular Electronics. It was the Altair. It was the Altair, wasn't it? Yes. And he said, "Paul, we got to write a basic for this." Yeah. Yeah. No, no, and they no. flew to New Mexico. Yeah. Well, I, how they actually did that, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with the details, but I, but I did meet him and Paul Allen personally. We negotiated for some time, and I want you to know that the first three books that. Bill Gates published. I was in the. Uh, I was in the, every one of those books. Oh, that's neat. Because we had a lot of mutual respect for each other. Yeah. So was he a tough negotiator? No. <laughs> no. Not not not, not, not for, with you. Not for my school. But was, but the problem is he's famous for the deals that he made for DOS and the beautiful and IBM. Oh, the, 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 brilliant. Do you know that deal that he made? Yeah. Yes. Are you familiar with it? Well, the well, you tell me the history of it. But as I remember. The idea is IBM doesn't real. They're not really thinking about it. They, they, instead of buying DOS outright, they say, "Well, no problem. We'll pay you for every copy we sell." No, tell me the story. 
So they were looking around for some operating system that would support the 8186. They, go to, they, they go to Monterey. They say hi to Gary Kildall. He's in a plane. Yeah, right, it's his birthday. Uh, yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> well, Gary Kildall was not a businessman. No, not. Absolutely no, not. I no. mean, in fact, <laughs> uh, uh, we, were, we were paying him $25 a copy every time we sold a computer. Because you had CPM. to have DR DOS. Because we have to have, uh, well... Or CPM. Called, yeah, CPM, right. Yeah. And uh, we were paying him something like $10,000 a month. From inside. From inside. So I said, how much do you want for a, 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 an outright license? I can make as many as I want. He said $25,000. <laughs> Not a good businessman. I, I looked at him like he was nuts. I said, I, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand so You wouldn't do the deal. I, I, said, I, I can't take advantage of you like that. <laughs> well, I said something like that. I said, I said, you must be kidding. He said, no. He says, I want the distribution. I, I said, well, good. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> so you did the deal. So I did the deal. Okay. And well, that was Gary Kildall. <laughs> not a good not a good businessman. Nice guy. Bright guy. Oh, very nice. We go So great. IBM says, they, oh, Gary's not here. They go to Seattle. So they go to Seattle and... So Bill looks around and finds Seattle Computer Products and buys their pr very, Gary very, Patterson, yeah. very, very primitive operating system. Right. And the deal he makes with IBM is that we'll do everything that you want in a closed room. No one else can know about it. And of course, what we do in our business, that's, that's, um, that's our business. Right. Of course, what, what's true, though, is that Bill knew about both things. <laughs> he said, I got a DOS for you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can get I, you that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gary well, no, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no. So he got the DOS. Yeah. Uh, but, when he, but then there came along OS2. Right. And OS2 is a genuine multitasking operating right. system. Really, really very, very capable. And Bill did that. Bill wrote OS2 for him, or he had a staff write OS2 for him. And in the back, in another room, he had uh, Windows being built. Oh my God! And when IBM wanted an update to OS2, he said, "No, I'm not interested in that business. You do it to get someone else to do it." And that caught IBM flat-footed. That that did clean their clock. Yeah. Yeah. Bill was able to come out with Windows totally unopposed right. because he did that in a separate room with a separate staff. Right. No, then there was no crossover, you think? They always told the story that people like Ed Iacobucci, who was working for IBM, went to Seattle. IBMers went to Boca. Let me put it this way. They had established a way of doing it so that IBM had no grounds for a lawsuit of any Yeah, case. obviously they would have sued if they thought they could. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Interesting. Yeah. Very clever. But now, now I want you to know, IBM came to me too. They wanted me to build uh, build them a special version of Wordstar that would work on the 8186. He said, "We'll pay for that and we'll own it." Mm -hmm. I said, "No, thank you." Why not? Well, because I didn't want to sell IBM the rights to anything. Right. You wanted to keep it. Exactly. If you're going to develop it, yeah, you'll sell it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we sold the hell out of it. We really did. Yeah. That's the year we did 72 million dollars on the IBM <laughs> strength of the IBM PC. Wow. Wow. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, but the so you weren't going ball. through Ingram or somebody. You were selling direct to dealers. Well, we did. We did Ingram too. You we did, did distribute. We, you did have some. We would sell to anybody. Right. We weren't fussy. Right. <laughs> you got the cash. Yeah. Like, yeah you, hey, you have the money. Here's the, here's <laughs> here's the, the, the product. Here's the box. <laughs> I mean, we had quantity discounts and stuff. Sure. But the 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 guy coming in. After I had a heart attack, he decided that it was too much trouble to do all that billing. He, so he stopped selling it to dealers. So he stopped selling. He didn't want to do uh, onesies, twosies. He wanted to sell ten thousand at a time. Something like that. Yeah. And and the way I got him fired finally is that he did a deal. So you were still on the board, or? Yeah, well, I had a, yeah. You had a seat on the board. Yeah. Okay. But uh, the way I got him fired is that he did a deal with a company called First Software. That bought a whole bunch of product from uh, MicroPro on credit. Mm. Got delivered something like a, a fifty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand. I don't know. But it was a huge number. Maybe it's more than that. In fact, huge sale. And the, you know the way you you record sales is that you book the sale when you get the sale, rather than when you deliver it. Right. And so we booked the sale, which showed a gigantic profit. 
that raised the stock of the company tremendously. And then this guy goes and sells a bunch of his stock and cashes out. Oh, oh that's clever. <laughs> clever, that's but, a... clever, but downright illegal. Yeah. It's like pump so, and dump. That's so, kind of, so, yeah. so I, I mean. That's an insider, that's insider trading. I could have pound, pounded his gonads, but I, Instead? I, I just, just got him fired. At the door. But, that's good. When did you stop having any association with Micropro? Were you there till the end? Pretty much. Yeah, but you were a board member. You weren't. You weren't active in the. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have any power. Right. I didn't have any power, and anything I said was regarded as, as rubbish from the founder. Oh, that's too bad. So. That is too bad. Well, it's been a real pleasure, Seymour. I hope all the best with Web Thresher. Thank it's you very, very cool. much. It's yeah, great too, too that you're still I, doing this. Too stuff. bad I never told you very much about the program. I'll yeah, you did. Didn't he? Well, show us some more. What What else? We're still recording. We never stop recording. Okay. Well, let's do another search, but some instead of something well, better than pygmy goats. Pygmy goats. Let's do something like you want. What should uh, we do? Anything you want. Anything. No, don't ask me. What's a good search? Oh, a friend of mine was trying to find end of life care information in Spain, Portugal, and Morocco. That's bizarre. She had used yeah, it's esoteric. Very esoteric. And she had used all different search engines and wasn't finding what she wanted. And she came over to the house in an earlier version of Web Thresher that wasn't even as beautiful as this one is. And uh, she found everything she needed. That's awesome. Yes, she keeps begging for, you know, now it's kind of a depressing, kind of a depressing search, though I'm not sure I want to do that. Well, uh, that's your business. But I get what you, like, yeah, right. No, I get what you're saying. I have to go. I'm, I'm, I'm being wrapped by my girlfriend. Well, <laughs> she all said, right, you're right, gonna so get out of here. I'll tell you why. Invite me back, and I'll give you a better demonstration. I'll come I think we got the idea. It's okay. not like you got anything to sell right now. No, I don't. When, you, when people could buy it, uh, okay. we'll get a better demonstration. Okay. Very good. That's fine. Awesome. It's nice to meet you, Seymour. <laughs> pleasure here. Thank you so much. I appreciate Truly. it. Seymour Rubenstein, a real pleasure. Thank a you. legend in the business. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. I still, my fingers still know. Control KS, control. <laughs> all of that. I swear to God. <laughs> After you hit it a million times, it's, it's in your... It's in your blood. It's in your blood. <laughs> what would we have done with that word star? Hey, thanks for joining us. We do triangulation every week, Wednesday evenings, around about 4 o'clock Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's about midnight UTC. If you can join us live, I'd love it if you do. If not, on-demand versions of all of our shows. We've got 128 of them now. Hey, that's nice. Two to the, what is it, two to the eighth? To the seventh? To the seventh. Lots of, lots of shows. You could go get all of them at twit.tv slash TRI or subscribe. You'll get every show when it comes out on your favorite uh, podcast client. Thanks to John Slanina. I never get to thank you, John, for running the, running the board, our technical director, our producer, Karsten Pondi, and thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week on Triangulation. Bye-bye.